welcome to episode number 125 of Well Met. We are a Hearthstone podcast brought to you by blizzpro.com. Today is Monday, September 25th, 2017 from Studio 6. That's right, the number has changed from 5 to 6. Did some remodeling this past week. Uh, but hey, from Studio 6 in Denver, Colorado, I'm Kick Tripod and... We've got a wild crew this week. <laughs> Those wild puns will be coming. First, you know him everywhere. He's been here every week now for like the past three months. He's no stranger. Danny Donuts really quick. Hey, Danny, how you doing, man? Hey, John, how's it going? Going all right, dude. Going going good. Excited for the show. We've got, man, we've got a surprise. I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm in my natural <laughs> environment now. I have uh, I have the the jungle around me, uh, ready for this wild adventure. Oh my gosh! I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm as, I I am almost as surprised as our listeners about our guest <laughs> because I I found out about this like kind of last minute, but I'm really excited. He is like the premier. I, I, man, how do I even put this? How would you describe our guest, Danny? How would you? How would you frame this handsome sure. man? Well, I would uh, I would say he is the wild streamer. There's no <laughs> other. I'd say the <laughs> wild streamer. That's a really good way to put it. The Although Danny Donuts Twitch is a pretty good wild streamer, I, I must say. Eh, it's not bad. I, I'm not I'm not that consistent, but I feel that control <laughs> uh, he definitely uh, built it up. Awesome. Well, we do have yeah. none other than control with us. Control, welcome to the show. You get a a big round of applause. <laughs> right. Amazing. You're on a podcast. It's like you're in a live studio with an audience. <laughs> Shut up, studio audience. Please let them talk. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's going to be a blast. We're gonna, we have a lot of topics to burn through this week. We've got uh, some questions to ask control. We've got some news to get through. There's some esports announcements. And then, of course, we're, we're actually centering a lot of... I actually took a little break from podcasting and Hearthstone control. And so I basically lost all my Hearthstone skills. So Danny and Ray <laughs> are helping me get back into the groove of things. And so if we have time, we're going to do a rookie mistakes segment, which should just be called What Kick Tripod Shouldn't Do. And I mean, that'll help me too. I'm pretty boosted, so <laughs> boosted. Okay. Danny can help teach us. Man, that humility. Be good. Humility is blinding right now. <laughs> uh, well, before we get started, as we do whenever we have a new guest on the show, uh, we like to take some time to get to know them. This time we're going to do it in a little rapid fire uh, sort of way. So, Danny, are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Let's cool. Let's give control. Uh, some questions. Let's put them through. Sounds right, good. Here we, here we go. All right. First, control. Name. How old are you and where are you from? Oh, my name is Jesse Chrysler. I go by control. I'm 21 and I live in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. All right. Very cool. Nice. Dang. Uh, what do you do outside of Hearthstone? Uh, I like to cook food, walk my dogs with cute girls. I'll look at my golden cards in Hearthstone. And watch anime. <laughs> In that order? Yes. In that perfect. Favorite color? Yeah. Blue. All right. We're getting Fav the easy ones. Favorite fast way. food restaurant? McDonald's. Easy. All right. Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, I watched like one Star Wars movie, so I guess I'll say Star Wars. I haven't seen Star Trek before, so Dang I'm kind of right. lame. Please forgive me. Cool. All right. Well... Let's give you a redeeming question. Favorite anime? Ooh. Uh, Code Geass. It's kind of nice. tough, but I'm going to go with the simple one. All right. Should be good. Cool. Your Hollywood crush? Uh, again, easy. Amelia Clark. Her eyebrows just... Oh. Dang. I love them. It's a good yeah, choice. Yeah, she's the best. I love her. It's a good choice. All right. Uh, f uh, All right, I'll you're go. You're up next. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Favorite Damn, Hearthstone I'm meta. Sorry. Oh, you're jumping the boat. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, your favorite uh, really Hearthstone like, meta. I really like the post-war song nerf uh, meta for Hearthstone. So basically, when Patron Warrior was still a deck before, Wild and Standard separated. I really enjoyed that metagame. That's when I started tryharding a lot, basically. Enjoyed that a lot. Cool. 
Favorite Hearthstone content creator? I don't know. That one's kind of tough. So do you guys mean like streamer or YouTube video? Or are you Anyone like YouTube? who makes content for Hearthstone, whether it's okay. streaming, YouTube, pod, pod, podcasting. Just kidding. We're not hmm. allowed. We're, we're not in the running. I think I'm going to say Jackie. I really like watching when I wake up in the morning. So Jackie Chan. Awesome. That would be my answer. Awesome. All right. Favorite Hearthstone class? Probably Warrior because of the patron thing. And then I'm basically a Pyro Warrior one trick, or I have been previously. So... Yeah, I'd probably just say Warrior. Cool. One Garrosh. of the best Pirate Warrior players I've ever met. Cool. Could have drawn cannon, coin one drop. <laughs> All right, last one. Favorite Hearthstone deck that you've ever played, ever in your whole life? Uh, I'm going to go back to Patron. So just post our Patron Warrior. Love that deck. Nice. Okay, cool. That's it. I was done. You passed. You get nice. to stay for the rest of the show. <laughs> so We oh, actually cool. initially had a a uh, favorite Batman <laughs> question in there. But we were worried that if uh, anyone on the show answers cr- incorrectly, that we just have to kick them off. <laughs> and we weren't <laughs> like, let's do something a little less divisive. Um, yeah. So, well, let's, let's do this. Let's go into this next. So every week, what we do before we get into the news and the word, my word of the day is razzmatazz. Before we get into the razzmatazz of the rest of the show, we always talk about what we were up to this week in Hearthstone, maybe what decks we're playing, where we are on the ladder. Uh, So, Control, what you been up to in Hearthstone this week, man? Uh, Not too much. I've been memeing a lot in Wild, trying to make a lot of bad decks good, which is a little bit tougher than it sounds. So, Wild, I've been trying a bunch of different stuff, basically just rotating decks. Probably played like 20 or 30 different decks on stream this week. Just messed around a lot. And in standard, I've been hovering top 100 just with Silence Priest, continuing to play that. Solid tier 4 deck. It's uh, very reminiscent for me of Egg Druid. Good old tier 4 decks that I'm taking to high ranks. A lot of fun. Nice. Danny, what about you, man? What are you up to? Well, I mean, what, what I have to say doesn't really shine to that. I was memeing around in lower wild rank than Control. <laughs> Um, I also had a pretty cool tournament that I played with a couple friends. We had some interesting deck rules where you went in and you could only use legendaries, epics, and TGT cards. So <laughs> it was pretty I interesting. Make a deck with, with those rules, I don't think I have enough. So we went in, we had some ridiculous decks, and it was actually a lot of fun. Nice. Sounds cool. All right. So here's what I've been up to. I hate to like put you both to shame. But, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I apologize. So I had such dreams for this week in Hearthstone. I was like, I'm going to just grind the heck out of everything. And then um, basically, long story short, I ended up um, just remodeling the whole studio instead. <laughs> so we built, we built a... Um, a deck on last week's show control. We built a mid range hunter deck that was supposed to get me from rank 25 to probably rank five ish. And well, uh, you'll be happy to know. I have a 66.6666% win rate on three, on three games. So nice. It's really good. We are hitting. Yeah. It's, it's not the sample size. It's the overall win percentage. Of At course, that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. So that's why if you start off with like two or three wins right in a row, uh, you just don't play it all the rest of the season, right? Like that's yeah. it's that's that oh, just like that one trick pony. You you play Reno Hunter, you get that one win, and then you're done. Exactly, hundred percent win rate. Hundred percent win rate, <laughs> Reno Hunter. She did that. I made a hearth pump post with a eighty percent win rate Iron Juggernaut Warrior deck. Got a cool clip with it, so I did that. I went four and five of it. <laughs> so yeah, eighty percent win rate Iron Juggernaut Warrior. Yeah. So I, I didn't get to I didn't get to play as much as I wanted to, but I've set a lot of time away <laughs> this next week to do that. I'm gonna make it up. I'm gonna get rank five before the end of the season just because I need to. That's like that's my, you know, dad legend thing. And, you know, I'll do that. Not nearly good enough. That's why we have Danny and Ray on the show. They can do all the hard work and hit legend every month, and I can just be like, yeah, but do, can you push the buttons? <laughs> <laughs> buttons, right? Can you can you do that? And they're like, you can't even do that. He's pressing the wrong ones. Yeah, it's true. It's it's tough, man. It's <laughs> hard work. Oh yeah. Anyways, that's what we were up to this week. 
let's jump into the news. This week in Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Pretty slow week, pretty slow week this week, but we did get some uh, news. First, you heard it from Ray. In between, like, coherent statements and sobs is where we had Ray C last week from all, all, all the stuff that happened in HCT Americas. But uh, the Hearthstone team did respond and ultimately said, hey, there was a lot of stuff going on, and a lot of it was out of our control, but we we can and should have done better, is ultimately what I took away from this. Um, Danny, do you have any big thoughts on this one? I mean, it feels... It felt pretty cut and paste for me, honestly. Yeah. You know, standard PR I mean, response. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, to me, it was like a bittersweet thing that they acknowledged it. They went in and they, at least they addressed they had a problem. But then they went in and they threw a couple things in that were a little questionable, saying that they got DDoSed throughout the whole thing. <laughs> and, I mean, they they probably didn't get DDoSed, but, I mean, what am, who am I to say that? But... Uh, so yeah, the, they were throwing a couple excuses around, but uh, I, I was happy to see that they at least addressed it. Yeah. Yeah, Control I, I definitely say that I agree. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's like some stuff that was just kind of unexcusable. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about the Luker thing. I think the Blizzard given laptop just like crapped out, I believe. Uh, I might not be remembering that correctly, but I believe that the Blizzard given laptop that he got just stopped working when he was in a situation where he basically always won the game that he was in. Had a shot at making it, um, but unfortunately he had to regame when he basically always won the game that he was in and ended up losing, lost his shot. Very, very unfortunate with that. And then all the disconnects and stuff, right? Like, there should be tournament mode that should not be happening. Yeah. Yeah, We've been that's... big proponents of tournament mode on this show for many, many years, before I was even here. We're the OG <laughs> tournament mode podcast, basically. We, we, we might re- like rebrand, <laughs> just be like the tournament <laughs> mode podcast where we just ask for tournament mode for like 75 minutes straight. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was interesting. And I, I am definitely a blizzard apologist when it comes to issues like this. Like I always am the first one to be like, there's something going on. We don't see there's something that, you know, that we don't fully understand. I'm not a game developer. Like you guys, you I can barely turn on my computer. Like I'm not developing any games. So when um, you know Blizzard is like, oh, this happened, that happened. I'm the first one to be like, that's truth. What you know, Blizzard has no reason to lie, and I still don't think that they're lying. But control to your point, when it comes to like tournament mode, I was like, oh yeah, we we just you know, there's a lot of things. Tournament mode isn't easy to implement, and then I realized it's been about two and a half years since, <laughs> like, we first called for a tournament mode, and I'm like, ah, okay, you got me. <laughs> like, it's it's time. It's definitely time for some tournament mode. So, I hope that's coming soon. But I'm at least glad that they just addressed it and, you know, we're like it needs to be better at the very least. All, all we got was a commitment of we need to do better. And that's, that's okay. I think for well, Blizzard for typically now. keeps their promises, at least down the line. Like when they said they would give us more deck slots, they gave us more deck slots <laughs> and stuff like that. They, yeah, <laughs> they, yeah they, they typically, they typically go and they finish their promises uh, at some point. Yeah. It's the Blizzard soon uh, cliche. <laughs> Trademark, so. yeah. yeah. And it's tough. <laughs> I, I can't imagine being a developer and like trying to implement all those things in the right way. But either way, uh, here's to more successful tournaments in the future. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go on to this next one. Danny, what's going on with the October Brawl? All right. So we just had week two of the October Brawl. Um, so they got the both teams got ten packs of both TGT and Whispers of the Old Gods. Um, so from there they went and they had a show match, and Team Light won two to one over Team Void. So uh, we're gonna ask what what team are you guys? Team Void or Team Light? Team Void. Void. Oh come on! Uh... I'm Team Light, man. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have anything to do that I work on the Tempo Storm meta snapshot, and I technically work for Raynad. 
That's not why. That's not why. Of course not. Yeah. Of Direct course support. Not. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so no bias. No, I don't at see all. it. Just, I... It's kind of tough for me because I have teammates on both teams, so it's a little bit rough. I basically just went by streamers that I watch uh, consistently. I watch Dog and Jackie a lot, and I also watch Ali. So I just like decided with Team Void because of that slight edge two to one. So. Yeah, basically the same. They're not my teammates, but we've had Jackie on the show before. Uh, we've chatted with Allie for other things, and you know, I like, I like Tempo Storm. I like him. Seem like cool dudes. So, I, 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 but, but I, at the end of the day, I was, I was Team Void for sure. So, is that, is that still going on? Are we done? How much longer is that? Oh, we're halfway through right now. So yeah, it's going on for quite a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah. next week they're they're doing um, the next two expansions. So I think that's what is that on Goro and uh, what is it? Knights of the Frozen Throne. And then in the week after they're gonna have a wrap up at TwitchCon actually. Nice. I'm actually gonna be. We were just talking about this. Uh, both Control and I are gonna be at TwitchCon, so we will be there. And Danny, you're not gonna person. be there, right? No, unfortunately, I'm busy during that period. Okay, too good for it. I get it. That's fair. <laughs> I understand. Uh, and if you're missing Ray this week, he is actually casting the... It's Tespa, right? He's tas he's casting uh, the Tespa Collegiate Series with Cora. So good luck to Ray. He's tweeted a picture with his makeup on, and he's not half ugly. So, hey. Does he look bad. cute? Yeah, he's kind of cute. He's That's nice. Yeah, he's, you know, Ray's Bay, as, as we say. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's going on. Let's let's jump in, though. We, let's let's do a little meta meta talk here. Beat him or join him. Ah, oh, no. All right, so a couple of cool things. First, uh, ESL Trinity Series returns next week, and... You guys know me, listeners. I love a good old-fashioned team tournament. I just love it. I think it adds a cool dynamic to Hearthstone. And there's there's a lot of good teams here. You've got Complexity, G2, Liquid, Planet Odd, which uh, is that what that is? I'm new to that term. Is that what it, is that like a new thing, or is that actually a is I think it's pretty new. I think it's like Zixo's team. I'm yeah, pretty so sure. It's, it's Zixo, Hoy, and Surrender. So it's like yeah. a really good stacked team. But I just didn't know if they found that off of like a Letterman's jacket from H&M. Be like, let's make this into an esports team. <laughs> or, you know, if it was something like actually already there. But uh, yeah, so there's that. Misfits, Virtus Pro. Team Lull, which of course is Zelay <laughs> and Chaki. <laughs> And then Muzzy's on that team too. I don't know if Muzzy had anything to do with the naming. And then Tempo Storm. Uh, but it, it's it's going to be, these are always great tournaments. Um, it's eight teams. We're going to see seven weeks, $150,000 up for grabs. And similar to the last one, it's going to be a best of 11. This one's last hero standing. I can't remember if the last one was or not. Uh, but control, what's your take on a team tournaments in Hearthstone and B this particular tournament? I think they're pretty cool. It's just like a variety of content, right? It's nice for viewers just to see a lot of the people you like to watch on stream at once, different types of tournaments. So it's just, again, new and engaging and fun for the players too, right? You get engaged with people on your team and Hearthstone, which is primarily a single player game, right? So single tournaments are kind of, or team tournaments are kind of cool because they take away from that aspect. You have to co-op, kind of talk to your team, figure out what you want to do and all that kind of stuff. Very similar to the Tespa thing that Ray's doing, right? Uh, it's like with teams, I believe, for unis. Um, and I think that's actually really engaging and fun to participate in. And uh, obviously, I mean, you know, big prize pool and all that kind of stuff too. So that's exciting too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And I think that all that kind of content is really cool. Do you have a Do you have a favorite roster here, one that you're you're pulling for? If I had a pick, I'd probably say Liquid. Uh, I like Dog and Pino a lot. The show's really cool, too. So, just a big fan of all three of those guys. It is so, a really good, yeah. It is a really good team. Danny, what do you think, man? What are, what are your thoughts on this one? Have you watched the Trinity series before? I, I had not. This is going to be the first one that I view. So, nice. I'm pretty excited. 
Yeah. Uh, so I actually played in a team tournament uh, about two weeks ago for the Tavern v. Tavern. So uh, experiencing that gets me really excited to see this because I've actually experienced being able to talk with some teammates about what plays you're going to make, about what position you are, but you're still piloting your own game. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I love the dynamic of it. I think, and I'm sure both of you can, you know, empathize with the fact that when it's one V one lineups can get pretty stale and even in three V three, but there's still the dynamic of, different players piloting different decks that they specialize in and it can be really cool right now i'm looking at the hearthpone poll we're looking at g2 is there there's a vote for who do you who do you think will win g2's in first with 23 percent of the vote you've got team liquid in second or sorry yes yeah, team liquid in second tempo storm in third team lull in fourth and they're all within a tenth of a or sorry, Tempest Storm and Team Liquid are within a tenth of a percentage point, so uh, they're really close. And then Team Lull, that's mine. I'm I'm voting for Team Lull <laughs> this time around. I was as well. I love some Zelay Chalky in voice chat. It is it is like nothing else in Hearthstone. Yeah, they're pretty funny right now. <laughs> and they they play like they're really smart. I just hate how they can be so memey. And then go and say like the most profound Hearthstone strategy things like, <laughs> back to back in two <laughs> in two segments or sentences. It's amazing to me. But that's going on. But um let's 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 talk a little bit more about the Tempo Storm meta snapshot. Danny, it's been a while since I've been in one of these. It's been like, it's been some pretty time. nice. We haven't really we haven't covered it that much, but uh I need some it's nice to get here. a look, an overview. It's nice to get an overview. Give me some help here. Tell me what's going on. Paint me right, a cool. word picture. Sure. So this meta, uh, in one word, I'm going to say it's diverse. At <laughs> okay. tier good one, good you word. have, at tier one, you have, uh, one is uh, Highlander Priest, two is Tempo Rogue, three Token Shaman, four Jade Druid, and five Midrange Hunter. So no repeats in the first tier. But then if you go down to tier two, you also have mage, tempo mage, pirate warrior, and then mid-range paladin. So out of the first two tiers, there are eight classes out of the eight decks represented. And Did then warlock pirate warrior? Yeah, that's tier two. Like the, the nerf bat, nobody said it would be good. Goodbye, fiery wind axe, so pirate warrior. I think that um, I think they're running the uh, the Keleseth pirate warrior uh, version, where you go in, you cut the... Um, you cut the buccaneer or whatever the two mana uh, pirate is. You play yeah, you're Kalisaf, ready to go, yeah. yeah, and you just jam Kalisaf and you're good to go. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a decent deck. It's still Pirate Warrior. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's still there. It's just not bleeding edge of the aggro. Yeah, no more two mana wax. So that's interesting. I would I would not have guessed Pirate Warrior based on our last conversation on on the nerfs. So eight eight classes rep, 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 represented. Wow, that was the most struggle bus <laughs> I've ever had. Which one's missing? Warlock. Warlock. I think they're hanging out in tier tier three. three? Control yeah, Warlock. Three. Yeah. I saw somebody running a Zulock that they were that they thought was really yeah. good. Trump was playing zoo. Trump was playing zoo, so it got pretty popular off that. Uh, oh, Trump. I think somebody named Satellite was getting really high ranks, so that's what was going down, and then a lot of people were in that that king the guy. Got yeah, the list actually looks okay. It's not bad on ladder. Interesting. What are, what's your take on the meta right now, Control? What have you kind of been seeing around? Do you think that this is a pretty healthy looking meta so far? Or are you are you not? I think it's all right. I think it's really defined by the legendary cards though, like Prince Kalisath. You draw that on two. It's kind of like GG. You shut us up at uh, the pre stuff with uh, Shadow Grandwood and Raza. That's basically my only complaint is it's um, really defined by the one of cards. So it's a little bit inconsistent with that kind of stuff. But I think overall it's pretty healthy. You're seeing a wide variety of decks and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can play a lot. That's what I like about it in both formats, Standard and Wild. Uh, you can just play a ton of different decks right now, which is actually wonderful. Yeah, I really enjoy that when you can just like pick up something like, say for me, Purified Priest, right? I just got engaged with the deck. I thought it was kind of interesting. Not the best deck ever, but I can play it, which is really cool for me. And do well with it at the same time. 
do you think any decks are wildly out of place in the tier list, or do you think it's relatively close? Well, I don't think Purify Priest is tier 4. That's basically all I think my opinion's relevant on right now, because it's all I've been playing since the nurse happened. Uh, I think it's at least tier 3, but I mean, one tier off isn't very incorrect. It's kind of just like, you know, margin of error, basically. Do you think we're still in flux here? Do you think we're going to see a lot of jockeying for position among these decks, or do you think that this is probably going to stay semi the same until we get the next expansion, presumably at BlizzCon? It's actually an interesting question. I mean, anything can happen. Has there been anything that people haven't discovered yet? The answer is usually yes. I think they'll say relatively the same, though. Yeah, and then I know that's that's kind of a like a it, it's a difficult <laughs> que- it's an easy question yeah. to ask, but one to answer is be like, so uh, can anyone come out with something that people haven't thought about yet? Which is like, well, if I knew that they could, then I would have. <laughs> but yeah, one of the things that you should also look at is the decks that actually got nerfed. So like Jade Druid and like Pirate Warrior, whereas those lists are the ones that I feel are the least refined at the moment because everyone's trying to figure out what to fill in the spots and maybe the build's not optimal. So I think that those decks might be able to make more of an impact as well as as time goes along, at least. Cool. They'll develop a little bit. Meta might shape around them. Interesting. Yeah, definitely good. So can you guys tell me a little bit about this this temp um where was the, the this so the jade druid you were just talking about jade druid and how it, it it hasn't been defined so what danny what were the big changes that we saw to druid again for maybe people who are just tuning in and and not totally in tune with the changes that had to druid and kind of how, how are people filling in those spots sure so in the nerf you lost both innervate and Spreading Plague. So uh, Innervate went from two mana to one mana, which essentially makes it unplayable in this deck. And then Spreading Plague went, and it went from five mana to six mana, which made it less uh, le- less like viable to be in the deck, but okay. most are still running one or two in the deck at the moment. Um, so the deck just got a little bit slower. You, you lose your chance to high roll a little bit with like with really high ramp and stuff like that. So um, it's still a really powerful deck, though. It still has the core with uh, Ultimate Infestation being such a good top-end card that you're still wanting to play some of the core package that you used to play. Control, do you know what what, what people are running now instead of um, even, like, what what are people running instead of Innervates? Like... Is it's more tech cards usually, as far as I understand. Uh, before there was like I think it was like twenty six cards were always running the same deck, and then there was like four tech slots, maybe five. Now I think you just have two extra tech slots. Like some people are, what I saw a little bit earlier in the expansion, or not the expansion, but after the nerf happened, some people were trying like ravens, for example, and chatting ravens in the deck. It's okay. the one two two just for something to do on curve. Uh, but I figure you just want to run more tech cards. Uh, that's my take on it, at least. I don't really play too much Jade Druid myself, sure. but that's what I see on ladder. Got it. Yeah, I just I I'm kind of thankful I missed the whole Jade Druid train, <laughs> <laughs> like not missed it, but you know, in the sense when it was just run everywhere at, yeah. at all times. I'm kind of glad I missed that. So, um, Danny, anything else noteworthy in your opinion here for the uh, the, the the meta snapshot? Well, for standard, Hunter finally has a tier one deck. It's true. So that's pretty thanks, big. Thanks to us last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty close. We, we, we were out. We were out a little bit before the meta came out. We were like we a couple of people tweeted us a few days after we created our deck with people who created decks that were very similar to the ones that we created. And so I'm feeling pretty good. I um I am thankful. I'm confident that I can climb this guy up a little bit, climb this deck up the ladder. And this one, so the the mid-range hunter that they have on Tempo Storm, only 2,000 dust, which is, so if you're a budget player or you don't have a huge collection, uh, this this might be the deck for you because this particular one that they have on Tempo Storm doesn't run any... Um, any legendaries. Ours ran, we ran... 
uh, Deathstalker Rexar, and what else? We threw something else in there. We threw the pirate package in. So we had patches and the blood cell yeah. cultists. That's nice. what it was. So, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident I can, I can pilot that guy out. Um, control anything kind of noteworthy for you in the meta right now, as far as what you're seeing that you wanted to bring up. Uh, not really, to be honest. I haven't been playing too too much standard. I played like a hundred games post nerf, so I haven't really played a ton. Sure. But again, the big thing for me is a variety of decks is what I really like right now. Uh, I'm just super happy to queue into a lot of different classes and a lot of different archetypes within those classes. And I think that's really fun for standard. And um, pretty stuff, I'm pretty excited with how the metagames kind of panned out post-nerf. So am I. I'm excited to kind of jump back in here. I'm, I'm hoping I can do something in September before October hits. We'll see. All right. So we brought Control on for a reason, besides the fact that he's smart and cool, is we wanted to get some thoughts on, on Wild. And so we have an unnamed, untagged Wild segment <laughs> coming up, and I don't even have a bumper for it except this one. Yeah! <laughs> I don't even know what it is. I'm going to be honest. I Googled I Googled for the beginning of Born to be Wild, and that's not even the beginning of Born <laughs> to be Wild. So I don't know why that applies here, but it feels wildish. Um, and so that's what we're going with. Uh, I mean, so, it works. <laughs> you know, it works better when you don't explain it, I suppose, in hindsight. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll just bypass that little note for a second. So, uh, Control, in April, you announced that you're actually switching over to Standard, right? And and uh, from Wild, and, and you listed some various factors. I believe it was like a four-and-a-half-minute video, if I remember correctly. Uh, and you, you cited some factors like the size of the scene, the support for the events, and other things. And so you switched over to Standard. Now you're back in Wild, uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about that journey and what it's looked like over the what it's looked like for the past you know six or so months? So uh, just for switching, like basically, it was probably the worst time for me to possibly do it because I mean I can't qualify for anything right now, right? Like there's no HTT stuff, the points are irrelevant. So I basically joined as soon as off season starts, which is really dumb. So my <laughs> finishes don't even matter or anything like that. Um, but yeah, basically the scene's really small right now, and um, there's not a lot of support for it. Uh, I'm not saying like, hey, Blizzard, you should probably just like drop 25k on tournaments all the time. Like you need to have an open every three months. It's not what I think has to happen. But um, I just figured that the scene's not large enough right now. So what I would do is split my time between Wild and Standard while still playing both. Because obviously, um, I definitely think that I have a deeper knowledge of the Wild meta game than I do in Standard. But I can still show that, hey, I can still do well in Standard, uh, get high ranks in this format and understand the decks as well and all that kind of stuff. Cool. That's basically it. So just play both. Um, more of variety for me as well. Variety of content, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of made sense, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have, in your time of switching back and forth, are there any big glaring advantages or, or disadvantages to the, to the different formats that you uh, kind of learned about on your way? Well, for me, wild's like a niche, right? Like people want to watch wild. Most of them be like, oh, that control guy streams wild. Um, but then uh, not a lot of, not a lot of people even want to watch wild to begin with is one of the issues right because again it's a niche but um and not a very big one so it'd be one of the things that i would say is that it's kind of like small again with the fan base uh and then standard there's a lot more people but again it's a lot more saturated that's one of the things i think again right because like everybody else does standard stuff right sure. Wild's uh the unpopular format and all that kind of stuff have you ever found a situation where you try playing around a wild card in standard because I went and played time. a little bit this week. I've done that so much. I go in, I'm like, it's turn five. got to play around the sludge belcher. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pre sub light bomb on turn six. And yeah, just stuff like that happens to me all the time. Uh, it's actually kind of funny having to switch your mindset like that. And that happens to me all the time. I'm still yeah, definitely getting lost on that. Especially with switching the format in between streams. Like, say I'll be playing Silence Priest and then switch to Combo Priest. It'll be like, oh, where's my balance chosen? It's like, oh, wait, that's not a card in standard. I'm playing Silence Priest, you know? <laughs> That sort of a thing. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It makes you switch your brain, and I, I kind of like that. I think differently, all that kind of jazz. Um, one thing I was kind of interested in from 
our perspective, because obviously we're a podcast, and so we make content about Hearthstone. Um, we don't. Before we brought Danny on, we didn't really talk about or even really mention Wild for content. Um, but like, this was Danny. This is your question, so feel free to like paint. A, a yeah, better sure. Picture from so, doing it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. So. When, when you're one of the wild content producers, when you're like one of the only people who goes and will like experiment with decks and come out with different things, how do you feel when like immediately after you play a game, you get net decked by someone and it's clearly your deck? Like when you get into a mirror with the Iron Juggernaut Warrior <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I think it's fun. I'm glad to be able to help people uh, play more refined decks or come up with uh, ideas that kind of can work a little bit better than, say, their initial idea would be able to work. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the biggest example of that, I think, was, like, the Egg Druid thing. The first time that happened to me was when I brought Egg Druid back, and I think, like, Fire Nova, I played against him three games in a row, and I just beat him all three, and then he just counter me with my deck, basically. And then just, <laughs> like, high-rolled the crap out of me. That was the first time that I remember that happened. I was like, oh, wow, this actually happens sometimes. Like, people are copying my decks now, damn. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. That's about it. I just, um, yeah, I think it's interesting. It's cool that I can have an impact on the scene. Have you noticed any what kind of major differences between the communities around Standard and Wild? Are there any kind of big differences? Like, well, Standard people can drink more alcohol, but Wild <laughs> people, you know, are really good at Sudoku puzzles. Anything like that? <laughs> um... I mean, I'd say a while it's more tight knit, obviously, because again, a uh, smaller community, like everybody basically knows each other. If you're at higher ranks, um, it's about it, though. Just like if you're a high rank player, you know most of the other high rank players because you've probably played against them on ladder before. Whereas standard, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, there's some people at higher ranks that you just won't queue into, even if you are a high rank player, too. But sure. differences between the community, I'd say like the wild community is usually a little bit more driven to come up with innovative decks, because that's one of the cool things about the format. Uh, there's a lot more space to do that. So I usually say the wild community is a little bit more creative with decks. Uh, try to make their homebrews and all that kind of stuff to rank up with. Whereas uh, in standard, people just be like, you know, hey, Dice, what are you playing, man? Give me your deck, dude. Stuff like that. <laughs> That's true. That's I've the never main difference, I'd say. To make my, since deck strings came out, I can't remember the last time <laughs> I turned pages in my collection manager. I just, you know, <laughs> done. We're good. We're done here. John, you should optimize this yourself. How about I don't? You know, I'm sure that Jackie did fine optimizing this deck. I don't know anything that Jackie doesn't know. And then, you know, eventually those pages get kind of curled and old. <laughs> and you know, Things start falling apart. I'm down to only 12 deck slots now. Blizzard's taking away my deck slots on, based on oh, the number of... Uh, the amount of creativity. What if they did that? The more you net deck, the less deck slots you get. It's like a lottery. Well, then at that point, it doesn't matter, right? You just need that one deck slot that you're That's net decking true. from. Yeah, exactly. Your priority I'll deck, you're fine to go. Just have my bookmarks. Hey, more space to me, right? Give me your additional deck yeah, slots. That's true. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Danny, what was this? I, I don't even understand your Naga Sea Witch question. Yeah. Oh, so what's your opinion on the, the Naga Sea Witch change? Um yeah, it, does it set a precedence of Blizzard being um, a little bit uh, unaware of what's going on in Wild? Well, I think it's kind of careless. I'm not a huge fan of it just because the deck is actually just so high roll. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the deck at all just because I feel like my little brother who doesn't play Hearthstone at all could queue up a Naga Sea Witch deck against me and beat me with it. Uh, just if he drew it. Like, if he understood, like, the basic strategy of the deck, he just draws the cards. Um it's kind of rough because, I mean, there's not a lot of counterplay. That's my issue with it. Uh, it's not that the deck's like, oh, you know, it has a super high winner or anything like that because I don't think that it does. It's just the games you lose feel really bad. And I don't think it's something that should exist in Wild for a long time. If it does, like, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of crappy right now that that's being introduced right as the aggro decks are getting nerfed because that would be a very clear-cut way to beat those decks consistently. It's like, hey, let me play Pyro Warrior, Jam War Accent to start hitting you in the head or innervate Flappy Bird out in Druid. Uh, but you can't do that now. So aggro decks are kind of like uh, took it down a notch well this kind of a change is uh kind of introduced now that they're super prevalent i don't think they really are at high ranks it's just you know something that uh i don't really want wild to devolve into is just uh you know hey i drew nagasi which on turn five you lose 
here's my board of giants. If you don't have light bomb to answer this, good game. But I mean, not that that's even necessarily bad, right? Because we could just adapt to that as a you know a community as a whole. The meta game would adapt if Blizzard decides to go for that way. Because again, it is wild, right? Like uh, it's supposed to be wild. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my take on that is I'm not a huge fan of the change. That's about it. Danny, I see you nodding your head. Agree or disagree here? So I agree <laughs> with that. However, I definitely took advantage of the Giants this season, and I went and I played a crap. <laughs> I played a crap ton oh. of Giant Hunter. I played a lot of it, so much that um, uh, I played Control yesterday, and I was playing a hunter deck. And he, imme- <laughs> he immediately goes and he discards all his cards to mulligan for like uh, I don't remember what you were playing, like light bomb or something. Yeah, I was looking for just. Like, and light and then I was randomly. just playing normal mid range hunter, <laughs> and it like yeah, completely man, messed him up. Can accolade my hand. So like, you I just won. Tossed is what you're saying. No, he still beat me. He still beat you. Yeah, you, yeah. I, we got to the end. Uh, it was a it was, it was really a fatigue right. match. It went to uh, Death Stalker, Rexar, and Zombies. So it was actually a really good game. Got it. That okay. was quality. All right, Danny, you're off the show. Control, you're in. Just oh. kidding. That's how we <laughs> that's how we determine our wild slot is just whoever beats <laughs> each other ends up being on the show. Um, nice, Danny. You want to take this last question too? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So in the in the past, uh, I've definitely said that Blizzard doesn't give wild enough support. So uh, what are some ideas that you have had that Blizzard could make wild great? Make well, it more again, accurate? like I said, I don't think they really need to do tournaments or anything like that. I think they just need to get more casual players interested in the format. Um, I know it's not necessarily the best idea for them because, I mean, hey, everybody, we should buy new packs, don't get eternal decks and all that kind of stuff. But my take on this would be just have two rank chests. Why not just let people get rank five and wild for a wild rank chest? Like, sure, so like 500 dust that they can get if they dust everything, but I mean, you're still getting standard players interested in playing the format. Uh, you know, maybe like 10% of the people that go grind to rank five for the chest, just simply for that. Figure, hey, this is actually a really cool game mode and I want to play a little bit more, and I'm kind of interested in it. And then maybe those players will go and be like, oh, hey, I want some more wild cards, let me buy some wild packs, and maybe they can make some money off of it too and all that kind of stuff. But that would be the one change that I think would be really good for the format and just the community in general to gain some more interest in it. But just to be offer a wild um, chest in addition to a standard one, not having two separate ones, um, or having two separate ones instead of just one. That's, That's a pretty good one. I don't know why nobody else thought of that. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but it, is, it is like, it's the way that you articulate kind of the important part of it, right? Cause it's, it's why, you know, for me, I am a, I, I go up to rank five and I usually go up to rank five in the first seven or eight days of a season when I don't take really long breaks and you know, it's relatively whatever, do it in 80, 90 games. And then, you know, boom done. And I'm like, well, I, I'm probably not going to make legend from here. So I'll just kind of grind, grind out the occasional games. But if I was like, well, you know what? I can get more rewards build my collection more. It makes a lot of sense, I think, to, to bring on, uh, you know, some, some more rewards and, and differentiate those rewards based on the type that you're playing and reward people for basically playing twice as much, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and doing that grind twice as often. It's, it's a good call. I approve. Ben Brode, I know you're listening. Uh, <laughs> we, we approve of this change. Danny, do you have any, I, I don't know if we've ever actually heard the answer to this question from you, but it's, if it seems like an important one, um, do you have any I, other ideas? I mean, just getting more publicity to the wild game mode in general is something that Blizzard can do. I mean, maybe something will like you have BlizzCon, right, where they're not playing any major tournaments. Maybe you make like a challenge stone segment and instead of just doing it in standard like they always do, why don't you make it wild? As soon as you get big like content creators like uh, like Crip, like all the big major guys who make YouTube videos and stuff like that, that the majority of the that the Hearthstone viewer base looks at. When they start seeing wild cards and everything, uh, it'll intrigue them a little bit to uh, at, at least check it out. Okay. So if you if there's more wild being played, and I mean they're definitely doing that with the October brawl, right? They're they're yeah. started off in the wild format, and they're coming in and they're starting to like all the games are wild. So 
I definitely saw a lot of people. I mean, uh, there's been more people in Wild this month than last month, at least. At least at Legend right now. I think there's, like, last month there was around 200 at this point. And right now we're around 300, so an extra 100 Legend players. Nice. That's not bad. Uh, Danny, any other thoughts that you wanted to hit on on kind of Wild versus Standard from, you know, you guys You guys are the Wild experts and the Hearthstone experts. So... Any other well, Wild's a lot, I mean, just to sum it up, Wild's a lot of fun. Uh, I got a refreshing uh, taste of Standard uh, throughout this week, played a little bit of that, but when when it comes down to it, uh, I feel that Wild is a lot more fun. You have a lot, a lot of crazier things happen. Um, the games, you can actually, deck building matters in Wild, whereas in Standard, you'll come in and you can just copy anyone's net deck, whereas if you can make a meta read in Wild's, like... You're, you, you can be really good at producing things. You can go in and actually make a deck that will beat your opponents more often than just copying some net deck. Cool. You still haven't sold me yet, Danny. I know you, you do this like it's like an altar call come to wild moment on, on the show. And, and I just you're good at it. But you, you missed you, you missed me on one piece. And it's where you said that I just can't net deck and do whatever I want. <laughs> and that's you can still do that. Yeah, you, you can you can net deck off some of the, the the bigger guys. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, there, there's definitely resources out there. It's just not as um, it it doesn't update as fast as standard. At least you'll have someone put out. You know how like in standard you can have ten variants of this Anduin priest just if you Google it. Like with this, there, you can probably find one or two versions. So if you want to net deck it, fantastic. But um, if you want to go and make your own version of it, you can also do that as well. And you can, it, you can get those extra percentage points. Like if you go and you play the Anduin deck, you can probably get a 56, 57% win rate with it if you play like one of the net deck ones. But if you go and you tech to your local meta, you can get those extra two or three or four extra percentage points. I will, I will say this. Um, when we first met you, Danny, you invited me to the Wild Hearthstone Discord. And it is, in yeah. my opinion, the best mainstream Hearthstone community that I've seen. You know, not like oh, yeah. podcast ones. Like, I think we have an awesome podcast Discord community. Um, and, you know, there are other smaller ones, but one that literally has thousands of people in it is, you know, I think it's, I think it's really phenomenal. And I think the people who are... It's it's tough for me to say because I don't want to say the people playing wild are less competitive because that's I don't think that's true at all. I would say that the people I've met in that discord who are playing wild do it for the enjoyment of the journey. If that makes sense. It's not just about hitting legend or whatever. It's about coming up with a cool new way to solve a problem with different tech cards or different deck archetypes and so they're a lot more insightful you know when we when ray when ray talks you know when ray's like uh what he do coaching and i don't get like a very good hand he goes just concede and move on you know because this game doesn't matter just go on and you know whereas like someone that i would know from wild to be like well let's look at this let's analyze it a little bit more how can we make this deck better we have so many cards at our disposal. It's the journey, John, not the destination. And I do really like that, but that might just be my experience too. Your guys might be different. Yeah. I just think it's you definitely hit the nail on the head on that too. The, the wild community is one of the definite like uh, benefits to having wild as well. Every, like control said earlier, everyone is really tight knit because yeah. if you're running up against someone six or seven times on ladder, Every uh, every other day. I mean, there's also the queuing into each other like repeatedly over and over, and you have that going on, and then the counter queuing comes in. Yeah. And uh, but um, yeah, because you get to know these people and their ideas about deck building and other things like that really uh, spark interesting discussions. At least. Cool. Awesome. All right. So last thing we have on the docket for the show here, and then we'll go ahead and get out of here is I don't think we're going to go through all of these, Danny, because these are all so good. And just in the interest of time, I'd just rather spread them out over a couple of weeks. But (laughs) 
we we call it, we were gonna call this segment rookie mistakes, and then we're like, you know what? Let's just call it kick tripod mistakes, because <laughs> in the end of the day, like that's that's where we're at, where we are right now, right? So I didn't even make a bumper for it or anything. But what we wanted to do is take a little time talk about some really rookie fundamental mistakes that players make and sit in this mindset you know, sit from very early on, especially if you haven't played other uh, TCGs or CCGs before. And so I hope you guys find this helpful. Let's go through this first one. So this one, Danny, you submitted this one saying, planning the full turn out in advance slash playing too fast. Uh, what, do you, sure. what do you mean by this? Break it down for me. Yeah, sure. So one of the things that I thought of when we were thinking about rookie mistakes was that a new player or someone who's been playing for a little bit will just see the first play that they have possible and jam that out as quickly as they can. So you have 90 seconds for your turn. So one of the things that I like to, uh, to tell to newer players is that you should definitely plan out your full turn in advance. So something like if you're going to draw, make sure you draw first. If you have anything that will have like a random effect, try to do that one first, unless there's like there's situations where that's not right. But if you have something like uh, Primordial Glyph and you need to discover something, do that first in case it affects your play. And then if you have any cards that you need to play in a specific ordering, like if you need to coin out before you play your Naga Sea Witch, uh, make sure you coin first and don't play Naga Sea Witch and then coin for uh, have the coin cost five mana afterwards. Make sure you coin first and then play Naga Sea Witch. Why did you look right um, at me? Who you looked like right at me? I think he was looking at me. I'm oh, no, sure. I was I was looking at control. Oh, okay, that one. Was control. Okay, good. I I can't. Yeah, like I said, I think these are mistakes for me. So these are probably pretty necessary for me. <laughs> Drawing lost, using my RNG effects lost. Um, playing Naga Sea Witch, then trying to coin and kind of just looking blankly at the camera, saying, "Hey, I don't get to play Sea Giant now, guys. My turn was wonderful." I'm good at the game. Check me out. That sort of thing Check happens fairly out. often when I stream. It's a lot of fun. Smash that yeah. like button. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, I mean, other little things are like card placement. So if you have like a piloted shredder, typically put that in the middle between two minions so that if you get one of the uh, minion buff cards like uh, Direwolf Alpha or the Totem, it'll buff those on the sides. And then, like, considering playing around certain cards like Meteor and stuff like that. So you, you, can, you put a lot of turn into what someone would think is a very simple turn of Hearthstone. Yeah. That's something that I think I noticed pretty early on in, in trying to go from, you know, that, like, rank 8 to rank 5 to, you know, the first couple times I hit Legend. And it was always about how much extra time you actually have to resolve your turn. And if this turn is done, do you need to start thinking, you need that extra time to start thinking about next term and turn and what your possibilities are. Uh, I'm really interested to hear from you guys though. What do you think the root cause of that is? Do you feel like players are just too worried about uh, running out of time? Do you think that they, just don't have an idea of what cadence is in Hearthstone and don't know that it matters. Do you think that there's kind of a root cause sitting in there? So my first thought on that is that Hearthstone is a game of repetition where if you play a lot of games with a deck, you will, you will come into similar situations over and over again. So if you've already done a play that's similar to this, maybe about five or six times, you're not going to think about it again. And actually thinking it through, while maybe 80% of the time it's just fine to just play it really quick, maybe there's something that gets thrown in in this specific situation that changes it up and makes you play a little bit differently than you did in the past. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm a culprit of all that kind of stuff. Like uh, I autopilot way too much and play way too fast when I play because I play all day. So it just feels really natural for me to do that. It's a little bit different when I have to like try hard and sit down and play in a tournament or anything like that. Um, the best of five, stuff like that, because then I have to change my mindset and stuff. So very much so uh, when I play, I usually just autopilot and hang out very laid back and don't really think about my turns too, too hard in most cases. Uh, but yeah, then you miss out on stuff like that, like meteor positioning. I mess up on that all the time, which is pretty funny because I do it. And then one second after, it's like, oh, nice meteor positioning. It's cool. It's like maybe I could have took like two more seconds and, uh, you know, instead of doing my turn in 15 seconds, maybe do it in like 20 and actually position correctly. So stuff like that, I'd say just like 
don't do your turn in 15 seconds every single turn. Even if you're playing Pyro Warrior, think a little bit harder than I do at least. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like just smashing cards. I just like throwing cards down. I'm like, I see that person hit end turn and I'm like, here's, yep, this is what I'm doing. Done. Time. It's like speed chess. I wish it was like speed chess. That'd be really good. <laughs> they, they, Blizzard did better. confirm they're coming out with something like a Nosdormu mode where the rope starts going immediately. Oh, yeah. So I they're, they're, that. they're working on that one. I, I bet that comes out before tournament mode comes out. I don't Probably. Really need the rope, dude. I need half of a rope and I'm good. That's just. That'd actually be a really fun mode if that was ranked ladder. I'd really enjoy yeah. that. Play it all day long. Cool. That'd be cool. So, second one you hit up here, Danny, was when to play for the board as an aggro player. Um, this, this obviously opens up, like we could probably do a whole multi-week series on, you know, knowing, knowing when to turn the corner and, you know, start doing damage or knowing when to let up. But, uh, what are, what are your big thoughts on, uh, you know, how to, how to hold and, you know, determine your board state sure. and game state? Well, uh, Actually, when I was making this, I was thinking of Control, to be honest, because he was a very, he's a very, very good Pirate Warrior player. And I actually learned a lot uh, watching him. But just in general, when I've seen some, um, some newer players play the game, immediately you'll have the people who go and just immediately, like, smork face and then don't, don't pay attention to any of the minions and they don't play for the board. But I've also seen the exact well, opposite. Deck, that deck list, by the way. Thank you very much. I'll take that <laughs> off the list. Yeah, but Sorry. you'll have other people who um, just trade every single time, and they won't start turning the corner like you said, and start going face and start sealing the game out. So uh, the control. Do, do you have any uh, anything about this? About being able to could be aggressive or turn the corner, or just any thoughts about that? I mean, in most cases, if you're playing an aggro deck, you should just be playing for board. Uh, unless you're like, say, Shaman with like two Lightning Bolts and two Crackles in your hand, then yeah, just jam everything face. But in most cases, uh, unless there's like something specific that you know you can't beat and you're pretty sure your opponent has, you should usually try to play for board when you're playing aggro decks. And see if you can set up like two turn lake something like that. That's usually when your turning point is. If you say, hey, I have like Heroic Strike and Leroy in my hand, uh, I can use them both. Uh, I'll use Heroic Strike this turn, and then next turn I can deal six damage with Leroy and win the game. See something like that, that's when you stop playing for board, you start going for face. Uh, but yeah, in general, uh, minions are really valuable because you can continue hitting with them turn after turn and they're forcing your opponent to react to them, right? So it's generally just going to be better than saying, like, hey, turn two, I want to play Heroic Strike and just jam it into your face. Usually better to um, hold on to that, kind of try and gain advantage on board and stumble that way. Cool. All right, last one, and then we'll save some of these for a later episode. And I think this one goes hand in hand with the one we just talked about. It's uh, the realize your role, beat down versus control. Um, Danny, go ahead and take this one. Sure. So in every game, you're going to have someone who is the aggressive player and you're going to have someone who's trying to recover and be like the control style player. Even in like a pirate warrior versus pirate warrior game, there's one person who's trying to beat the opponent down. There's one person who's trying to defend off of that initial aggression and then turn the corner and then beat them on that. So, um, just essentially try to figure out what you were trying to do. Or am I trying at that point in the game? What's your game plan? Are you trying to go and beat your opponent down, or are you trying to control the board and then flip the flip the script on them? And I mean, I've had some games where I'm playing like a control priest and I'm playing against a pirate warrior, and I just get an amazing start, and they have a dead dead hand. And at that point, you have to say, Am I an aggressor in this position? Am I trying to smork down like a pirate warrior? And sometimes you have situations, well, while it's very few, you will have some situations like that. So you got to make sure to figure out who's the aggressor, who's the defender. And then at that point, um, especially like in that uh, priest control priest matchup, playing cards for tempo as opposed to playing for value. One of the things that I always see in wild in like a control versus control matchup is someone holding on to their Reno, who's like the aggressor for a really long time for no reason. Where like they can play it as a tempo Reno, and because the Reno doesn't matter for them, the value doesn't matter at that point. You got to take advantage of the resources that you have. Cool. Control. Anything you want to add to that one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you just get when you play more, though. If you think critically about your games, uh, you can just like evaluate. 
oh, hey, Reno's not useful in this matchup. It's a six mana, four, six. Let's play it. Stuff like that. So I usually just say play more and uh, think critically about your games. And you'll usually be able to come to conclusions on all that kind of stuff. Realize, hey, this is what I do in this matchup, and this is what I do in that matchup. All right. I ask this to every guest that we have on this show uh, because I think it's like a fundamental question to, to Hearthstone, but I also am just so interested in how different all, all the different personalities in Hearthstone are. And since we're basically on the topic anyways, how do you think crit- critically and analyze your game and your play? And I would even ask you specifically, because right now you're, you're kind of at a cool, I've, I've mastered a lot of things. I've, I've been able to kind of let myself stay in this mindset. So when I'm critically thinking for the, uh, with the intent of learning, it's probably very different than critical thinking with the intent of playing this deck. I've played 250 games of just this month. But if you can even like hearken back to when you were learning kind of more about the game or, you know, learning more about new decks or you're putting yourself in the shoes of somebody who's less experienced, what in your, what would be your advice and how would you go about thinking critically in improving at Hearthstone? Uh, when I first started playing, I just like played at my desk uh, while I was studying. So I do like economics, um, accounting, calc homework, all that kind of stuff I was playing all the time. And I just play Patron Warrior and I do like a question and then, as soon as it came to my turn, I just like think about everything my opponent could do for like the next two turns and um, everything that I could do for moving forward and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of plan out the game. Um, not necessarily like in a very straightforward fashion where it's like, okay, I have to do this, like turn four, I'm going to play Dust Bite, turn five, I'm going to play Patron. That's it. It's always going to happen. But just kind of make sure I'm thinking critically about everything that can happen and, um, you know, kind of evaluate the scenarios that I'm in. It's like, okay, it's probably not good to play Patron here now because my opponent has like Dragonfire on turn six, for example. And I feel like based on his hand, it's pretty likely that he has that. So I just uh, say, always try to think and um, don't write your losses off. That's always an important thing. Like if you know you screw up and you do something wrong when you lose, always take note of that. Like today, uh, I missed lethal twice with Reno Priest because I just wait. I went way too slow with my turns. Uh, I had exactly lethal both times, but um, I ended up uh, roping out and I couldn't actually get it with the Shadow Reaper and Hero Power because it takes a long time for the animation. So I'd say uh, just make sure if you make mistakes like that, like really n- take note of it and try to learn from it. Like, for example, for me, next time I have a turn like that where I want to go all in with Shadow Granduin, I'll probably start like uh, not thinking too much and just kind of going in 10 seconds in the turn rather than like 20. So I have that extra margin of error uh, to kind of win the game with. Cool. I think that's great advice. I always love hearing hearing what, what other players are. Some are like, dude, just play a million games just play a million games and other people are like you know what you only need to play 30 games a month and just be really thoughtful about everyone and i love seeing the dynamic range of of the different opinions because obviously we're all wired differently and so cool all right well that sounder didn't work that (laughs) sucks man you can't even get the button presses dude it's like it's just not even hey there, there we is. go. Got it. It was tabbed out of the window somehow, but still on the front. I don't even know how that's possible. Anyways, thank you, uh, Control, so much for hanging out with us. Uh, I hope you had a good time. And, yeah, thanks uh, for having me. Appreciate it. Dude, it was it was an absolute blast having you on the show. Before we get out of here and everyone can you know go rush to and follow and subscribe to Control stream and youtube and everything else let's get through some of that housekeeping first patreon we do have a patreon so if you like the show and you want to help support however you can um we do have an awesome thing and our patreon perks begin at one dollar a month dollar a month gets you special access in our discord server there's a a guy mac daddy guns who's been making some amazing amazing uh like analysis of some meta stuff that I like. I don't even, it goes over my head. Can you explain it, Dan? Mac, Mac Daddy's Mac Daddy's analysis takes from all of the analysis uh, sites. So you have some from Tempo Storm from, I'm not sure if it's Tempo Storm, but he has like Vicious Syndicate, uh, HS Deck, uh, HS Replay. He gets all of them, accumulates it together, puts it together into like a very easy to view package. It's, it's one of the most incredible things that I've seen in uh, just creation of it. 
he creates very good uh, images and data analysis of the meta and all that stuff. It's really cool, and he actually puts it in the patron room first. So dollar dollar a month gets you in that. So hey, <laughs> thanks, Mac Daddy Guns. I'll send you some commissions, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, sign up over at patreon.com slash wellmedpodcast and get involved. Hang out with us. We love it. Our Discord is open to everybody. So uh, anyone can get our Discord at discord.me slash wellmedpodcast. And iTunes reviews. We did get two iTunes reviews this week in the USA from Go Tommy Goes and Bongers 9000. And I do have a special message from Bongers 9000. I will not have your babies. Thank you for the offer. <laughs> that was a real thing. That was a real thing. <laughs> All right. So shout outs to the week. And where, where can people find you? Control. Uh, Twitter.com slash F2 Canvas or Control. Find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Control the Board. And YouTube, uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Control HS. Awesome. And Danny, what about you? Shout outs for the week. Where can people find you? Nice. Well, shout out to Control for coming on the show. Um, for Danny getting mine. in contact. <laughs> Uh, for getting contact me, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Danny Donuts underscore HS, and you can find my much smaller Twitch stream at uh, Danny Donuts forty five. Awesome. As for me, uh, shout out first to Control for being on the show, and uh, big thank you, dude. I, I really appreciate having you on. And uh, you can find me everywhere at Kick Tripod, Twitch.tv slash Kick Tripod. And twitter.com slash kick tripod. I also do two other shows around the internet. You have the payload, it's an Overwatch podcast. You can find that at payload.blizzpro.com. We record live on Thursdays. And my new project with Minnesota Twins closing pitcher Trevor May. Him and I do a little Saturday morning gaming show called The Weekly Intake. And we just talk about video games and life. And we're really good at giving life advice and all that stuff. So uh, you can find that. Just search in your podcast catcher for the weekly intake. Whew. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us for episode 125 of WellMet. You can find us every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time at twitch.tv slash blizzbro. You can also find more awesome Hearthstone content throughout the week at hearthstone.blizzbro.com. You notice JR is taking a little break and so he can get some awesome content out on Blizz Pro, and they've been putting out some amazing work there, besides the show, of course. And you can also tweet us at WellMet Podcast or email us at wellmet at blizzpro.com with comments, questions, and ideas you have for the show. For real, we love to hear your ideas for the show, uh, different segments you'd like to hear. It really helps us frame the show, so we'd love to get to uh, hear more of those ideas. Uh, big thanks to Jake Butno for our music, and that's going to do it for us. We'll see you all next week. Bye, guys.